Good morning, YouTube viewers and subscribers. Um, so here's this old MDS engine that I uh, did a quick look video on yesterday. And after I shut the camera off, I kind of started looking at trying to get it set up to run. And this engine has got really, really good compression. And I did take the head off and those types of things. But I started looking at the carb and I was going to do my standard carb setup procedure on it and I found something rather disturbing which could actually mean that I can't run this engine and that is let me just show you what it is so I've already disassembled this carb off camera just to try to see if there was some issue with it that I wasn't seeing and right now all I've got is the little uh, high-speed needle thing retention off there so I've already put it all back together. One thing I noticed immediately is when I went to go set the carb up, one of the things, first things I always do is I close the needle valve fully to make sure that you can completely close off the flow of uh, air and or would be fuel. So right now, this needle valve, so here, let me show you, it's coming out. And obviously, because of the length of this thing, it can only go in there about this far. And our inlet here. So I'm going to rotate this thing all the way in. And, okay, so as a point of reference, out, listen. Hear that amount of airflow? Sorry, I had to move the carb. Now I'm going to close this completely, and I should close off the airflow completely. You hear that? It's not even coming close to closing off the flow of fuel or air at all. I mean, it almost sounds like it's not doing anything. So as a an example of verifying my technique, here's a carb from a, it's a brand new ASP52 carb, I think it is, never been used before. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave the barrel all the way open, take this high speed needle out, attach my fuel line. Now listen, massive amounts of airflow. this in all the way and close it. Okay, it's closed. Do you hear anything? Of course not. You didn't hear anything at all because this carb actually works properly. Now if I just crack it one turn, you can just barely start to hear it. So that's how what you should hear is you should hear as you close that you should hear the airflow completely shut off even with the barrel fully open. That's how you know if you've got a good carb or not. This carb, I don't think we'll ever run this engine because there's no way to completely lean it out enough so that you can get it to run properly. So, the uh, other thing I did last night was I started looking in my bin of carbs to see if I could find another carb from an engine that's on an engine or any place that would fit this. And unfortunately, I can't find one that's this same size. The little OSFP carbs I've got are way too small and any other 40 size, modern 40 size carb is like this and it's too large. So, kind of means that this engine may just be kind of a looker and that I really didn't make a very good purchase. Um, because I can't close this off completely. Now here is an idea that I might try. So I'm going to take this spray bar off, or this section off here <clears throat> and fully thread this high-speed needle in here again okay high-speed needle is fully threaded in and you can see how much the needle comes through there and I don't know if you're going to be able to see in here or not you can see the inlet to the right here inside here so this actually needs to this needle needs to extend further in to close this off completely 
And I'm thinking the only way I can do that, because I'm going to verify it here that this opening here will accept the full diameter of this. So that's a good thing. So I can basically make this needle valve go in more and hopefully remedy this engine so I can actually run this thing by just trimming maybe three threads off of here. Now I've looked and I don't see any kind of an o-ring in this at all. It's just like it's a hollow threaded portion so I don't think there's going to be an issue. So what I'm going to probably end up doing here is get my Dremel out, fixture this thing in the vise, and I'm probably going to cut off about three to four threads worth and see if that's enough because it really doesn't matter how much I can close, I have to be able to close off the flow of fuel completely, or in this case for the experiment, air completely, otherwise this engine is never going to run. This carb is never going to operate properly because that's just not how a carb works. It has to be able to completely close it off so that you can lean it out adequately to get peak RPM. That's just the way a carb works. So. Um, I don't see any other options. I don't want to put a different carb on here even if I had a different carb to put on this engine. I don't really want to do that. So that's left me with modifying this. As far as I'm concerned I don't really see that I have much choice and or have anything to lose because as it is this engine can't run the way it is. Because I did have a tester's engine I think like this or a McCoy's in engine like this a few months ago. Same thing. You could never close off the flow of uh, fuel completely and the engine would never lean out. So therefore it really wouldn't run properly. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to have to do. And I did have this entire thing apart. This barrel, <clears throat> I think I know why these things <laughs> were, were um, I think uh, one of my viewers has uh, told me that this was a, a, a Russian marketed engine and that's why it's got the acrylic or the Russian text on here as opposed to saying MDS which would have been marketed for the rest of the world. Still don't know a timeline for this um, but it just seems like it's kind of cheaply made the carb anyway. Uh, this barrel is like brass or bronze or it's a very very soft metal because just in the course of trying to re-screw this thread back in here I just touched the outside of this thing. I didn't have it lined up with the um, groove perfectly and it put a little dimple in that thing and it made it so it was very difficult to take the, the barrel out and even rotate anymore so it's like this thing is like made of pot metal. Um, not very well the barrel is very, very, very soft material, so I had to kind of clean that little burr up. And I didn't even tor screw this down. I just ran it down until it contacted it, and I put enough of a dimple in there so that this thing wouldn't rotate very well. So that I'm not impressed with at all. This carb is not impressive, but I'm going to go and see if I can at least modify this thing here so that I can actually run this engine. Okay, so I took... A very small section of the threads off. I think I got about two or three threads there and then I faced it with that grinding wheel also. So I'm going to run this in here again real quick and see if I've changed anything at all. I don't think it's bottomed out yet, but... Okay, there you go. I got it so it'll completely close off the flow of fuel. Oops, I'm sorry, listen. Closed. Okay, alright, so I think I've just successfully made it so that <clears throat> this carb actually has a chance in hell at operating. The last check I have to do is to make sure it'll still do that when I put this back on there. Make sure that spacing didn't 
change it. So we'll make that change and then we'll see. Then maybe this thing will actually get a chance to operate. Okay, so I faced that uh, down just a hair and I got this to work, but I still think I've got a it's pretty much inoperable carb because now I'm trying to adjust the low speed needle and I can't even get the low speed needle at a approximate uh, idle speed condition to even sound like it's changing the mixture either. So let me get on here and because of the design of this carb you can definitely feel the idle, the idle needle bottoming out against it's actually not a needle, it's just a, a hole, but it bottoms out against the inner portion of this so that, say if I, with the barrel open like this and I screwed the needle in a little bit more, it would restrict the amount I could close it. So it acts kind of like a throttle stop screw. So it's not like it goes in like this. It kind of, you know, does one of the, uh, does one of these things where it's butting up against. So, uh, whew. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to put this in approximate idle looking position and see if you can hear this. And that needle is completely closed now. The idle needle. bottomed out already so I don't even hear any airflow difference when I'm doing the idle speed so uh, I think I got a bad engine or a bad carb or maybe that's just how crappy these carbs were because right now I can go ahead put this carb on this engine and try and run it for the world to see and I'm pretty much guaranteeing that you're gonna see a really poorly running engine because the carb is garbage on it and I'm saying it's garbage now because uh, basically the airflow tests and how I set up a carb are not functioning properly on this carb and that's the standard I've used for over 30 years to set carbs up so uh, unfortunately I don't think I have a good carb here and I might try and run this engine with it just to prove that but the fact that this thing is so difficult and so stiff to turn is also somewhat of a concern. I'll, what I'll do is I'll set this out at about two full turns from open or from fully closed and maybe try and run it there but even adjusting this high speed needle with as uh, tight as that is is just going to be dicey because you can't even put a screwdriver or anything on this so I don't know. Don't have high hopes for this engine now or this carb especially. The engine may last and may work fine, but until I can find a different carb for it, I don't think it's going to be uh, running successfully. But uh, that's what I found with this uh, early MDS-40 engine.